Okay, so this is a simple explanation of exothermic and endothermic reactions. So we're going to start off here with three different types of matter. So we have our gas, our liquid, and our solid. So each box represents that different type of matter. And you can see the actual particles that make up right that matter. So for a gas, we have these particles right here. So what do you notice about the particles? They're actually very, their attraction is very weak. So these little parentheses or these little curves represent the attraction between the particles so you can see that the attraction is very weak what does that mean it means that the particles are very are very um far apart from each other they're not close together okay so when you go to a liquid you can see that the attraction is moderate it's definitely stronger than the gas right and so that means that the particles are more closer together and then you go to a solid and you can see that the attraction is very strong meaning that the particles are actually very closely packed together okay so what this process is called when you go from a gas to a liquid to a solid is actually you're losing energy this is an exothermic reaction so when you're losing energy energy is you can think of it as like as a human body you're losing energy you're you're releasing you're releasing heat you're re you're releasing energy it's exiting out of your body so you want to think of exit exo exit thermic ex exit thermic <laughs> exothermic um it's exiting or you're being released you're releasing energy okay so as you go from a gas to a liquid to a solid you're releasing energy so what conclusion can we draw from this is that the greater or i guess if you're losing energy that means you have more energy here right so the greater let me write it yeah let me write it here actually no here the greater the energy the weaker the attraction and that should make sense because think of like when you're when you're in a hot summer day, you have so much energy. When you are in a big room, right? You're in a big room and you're moving rapidly and you're moving freely. That means you have more energy. And that's what the particles in a gas are doing. They're moving rapidly and they're moving freely because they have a weak attraction. Why do they have a weak attraction? Because they have great, the most energy. They have the most energy. And that makes sense because when you have, when you're moving rapidly, you're moving freely, you have more energy, right? While you look at a solid, what would you say? Would you say that it has... Um, we know that it has a very strong attraction, so if we know that the greater the energy, the weaker the attraction, well then, let's say we have a strong attraction, then that means we have less energy. So the, the less energy, the less energy, the stronger the attraction. And that can make sense because in a winter day, usually you want to stay in your bed, cozied up in your sheets, and you don't really want to move because it's so cold, right? So that you can think of like you're frozen, like you don't want to move. So that's what a solid is, like frozen. Because we know particles in a solid, they don't, um, they vibrate, but they don't move around as freely as a liquid or a gas, or as liquid or gas particles do. So you want to think as you're, um... Think of it as you're frozen, and then in a gas, you want to think that you're very free. You have more energy, right? That's how I would remember it. Like in a gas, you're free, meaning you have more energy. You have more energy to move, and then in a solid, and then in a solid, you don't really have that much space to move. You're being very slow, like you don't really want to move, you know. And that means you have really low energy. So as you're going from a gas to a liquid to a solid you are losing energy. This is called exothermic because it's exiting, the energy is exiting, it's released, okay? Now, when you're going the opposite way, from when you're going to, from a solid to a liquid to a gas, what you're doing is you're gaining energy, right? Because if the idea is the more energy you get, the weaker the attraction, well, if we know that we're going from a solid to a gas, and we know that the solid has a strong attraction and the gas has a, a, um, a weak attraction. And again, we know that the greater the energy, the weaker the attraction. We're going to conclude that they are gaining energy, right? From a solid to a gas, you're gaining energy because you don't have energy with a, with a solid 
but in a gas you do. So that means that you gained energy in order to transform from a solid to a gas. Okay, so think of a um, think of cooking, right? So when you're cooking, let's say you're cooking rice, you have a so let's say you're cooking rice, you start with boiling water. So here's the boiling water, right? So you have your boiling water, and as you turn up the heat, so as you turn up the heat, what starts to happen, so this is a liquid, right? So as you turn up the heat, this is energy. So as you turn up the heat, you turn up the energy, right? That's what energy is. The the water, the liquid, is going to slowly start to condense or form into gas particles, into a gas. Now, why is that? Because the more energy you have, the more energy you have, the more energy you have, why do I keep repeating that? I just like lost my train of thought. The more energy you have, the weaker the attraction, meaning that the, the, the particles are less close together. And that means that it's gonna turn into a gas, right? If it's <laughs> if you start from a liquid and you go from a, and you go to a gas, that means you gained energy, and that's what this is. It's called turning up the heat. That's the energy, right? So that's one example. Um, another example of endothermic would be like ice melting. So as your ice, um, as your ice melts, you're going from a solid to a liquid, right? You're going from a solid to a liquid right and it's actually gaining energy so the energy is being gained it's being consumed i guess you could call it consumed by the ice meaning it's melting basically from the inside right so that's what that is and then exothermic would be like let's say um wood burning in a fire so it's if you touch it it's going to be warm right so that's how you know it's exothermic and if you touch ice right um and you know it's endothermic it's going to be cold right you touch ice it's going to be cold and yeah that's basically um this explanation between exothermic and endothermic hope that helped